This is Deuteronomy 4, verse 7. For what nation is there so great, who hath the Most High so nigh unto them, as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? Kal halal Yahweh, Bahashem, Hashem, Shai, Bahashem Rukakudash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutations also to the many brothers on down teaching and pushing this gospel across the whole world. And of course, greetings to the few sisters that tune in to these video epistles. I've called this lesson, God has favorites. Of course, we know his name is Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning to be, to be present, to exist. And his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, Yah, meaning he, our Shai, to redeem our, our Savior. And the thought that we're considering in this lesson is uncomfortable to many folks prior to coming into this truth. I would be one of those questioning certain aspects which we're going to look at during this brief lesson. Really it's regarding like human emotion that we see in our power. And if we just even look at the basic definition of this word favorite, it suggests in our you know, our human minds, unfairness, because you're picking one and leaving the other. But that is exactly the story of the Holy Scriptures, as uncomfortable as it is. The Most High has favorites and it's throughout the whole scriptures I mean this a lesson like this speaking about the most high favorites and the fact that there's others by definition who are put to one side could go on and on and on for many many hours but I've just picked a few scriptures that speaks to this whole idea of the Most High having favorites. And if you just stumbling across this lesson or this channel, you might wonder what this is all about. The Hebrew Israelites who currently are being called by their bywords of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have awoken to their true identity as the people of the book. And so these epistles are aimed at the hopeful elect as the scripture refers to the elect and no one knows if they are such. So we refer to ourselves as the hopeful elect and these video epistles, we use them to encourage each other along the way. So it's more than likely that this is not for you. So if we go back to 
Deuteronomy 4 and give a little bit more context. Let's go from 5 to say around 8. Well, let's start at 4. But ye that did cleave unto the how of I, your power are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh my power commanded me. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, not the whole world. That ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say surely this great nation referring to Israel is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who hath the most high so nigh as near unto them as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for. Verse 8. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? So we in our human emotions, we can stumble at the fact that Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, exhibits some human emotions. But what the thought that come to me is, well, who created the human and his emotion? Why wouldn't he? have emotions over his creation. You see, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense that he would or we would have similar qualities as our creation or our creator. So let's Apart from love, which is spoken of endlessly, God is love, 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 love. This is what is pushed. Not realizing that our power is perfect balance. With that thought, let's go to Deuteronomy 32 for our next scripture. And just pick one verse here. 32 verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. The most high of truth. And without iniquity. Just and right is he. And there's another scripture in Proverbs. That speaks about this perfect balance and that without it is an abomination unto him and we want to pick go to a few verses back and forth that speaks to this favorite and who is not his favorite so if we start with got a few in um, Isaiah let's go Isaiah 43 and start with, let's go from 1 to 7. Isaiah 43, starting at 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, Yahweh thy power, 
the Holy One of Asherah, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up unto the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bahakadash. We give honor and glory to the Most High God. He's chosen us. Let's go to Isaiah again, 44 and 1 to 6. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jeshuan, another word for Jerusalem, who I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Amen. Let's keep going. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and, and I am the last, and beside me there is no power. Amen. So we keep seeing this choice that has been made and as i'm in isaiah let's just go to 45 isaiah 45 and just read a few verses there isaiah 45 verse 3 and i will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which call thee by thy name am the power of Israel for Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect I have even called thee by thy name I have surnamed thee though thou hast not known me I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else there is no power beside me I girded thee though thou hast not known me Amen yes even when we didn't know the correct names, we didn't know who he was. We was off following after other nations, doing other things, turning our backs. We still belonged to him. As with the story of the prodigal son, the fact of him walking away from his heritage, turning his back on his father, it didn't change who he was. And so let's go to uh, we want to contrast. Let's go, we should just carry on in Isaiah really and go back to Isaiah. 40 what we're looking at is the most high whose name is Yahweh did choose has chosen as uncomfortable as that is and what does that mean for the rest well Isaiah 40 verse 15 behold 
the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Now, we understand that uh, Lebanon has some magnificent trees. Lots of trees. Massive trees at the base of these trees they're so wide so incredibly huge and numerous from memory I believe Solomon used much of the trees in Lebanon uh, to build or as part of the building of that magnificent temple and so this is saying to us here that the other nations there isn't enough trees in Lebanon for them to give or to use in the case of making a burnt offering unto our power it just isn't enough it's impossible they have no part in this our story their role is insignificant let's start again from verse 15 chapter 40 isaiah 40 verse 15 behold these other nations the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance behold he taketh up the isles as a very little thing and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him as less than nothing and vanity. So we see a picture being painted here. And we're going to go further with the same thought in uh, the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra 6, and if we go from 54, 2nd Ezra 6 and 54. This is Muriel speaking to the angel of the Most High. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also, whom thou hast chosen. And this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them, this is the other nations, unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And so Ezra is asking, And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, these other nations, which have been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thou thy only begotten and thy fervent lover are given into their hands if the world now be for our sakes this is verse 59 why do we not possess an inheritance with the world and how long shall this endure so Ezra is looking at the choice that the most high has made he has said we are his fervent lover his favorite he has chosen us but yet we find ourselves underneath those who have been referred to as spit so this is the dilemma 
we often read Second Ezra 6, 7 and 9. Well, let's read it. Second Ezra 6, 7 and 9, it's important. Second Ezra 6, starting at 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, signifying removing Esau from the power seat. Esau, who is Edom, that's Genesis, Genesis 36 and 8, and other scriptures. For Esau, the Edomites, who are currently going under the banner of being white or calling themselves the white people which we don't see that in the scriptures there's no such thing no such thing as a black person but that's for another time just to identify who we are verse 9 again for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob Yasharala Israel is the beginning of it that followeth. Which would mean that the Edomites are currently in their kingdom. And we can tell by all of what is happening regarding whether health issues or wars, rumors of wars, various signs in the skies ordinances red moon black moon all types things are winding up and we still want to not lose track and get off the subject here because also in Esdras there's something more about these favorites that we want to speak on so second Esdras 5 and uh, start at 22. Second Ezra 5 and 22. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began to talk with the Most High again. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth, and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. That's Israel. Palestine, and of all the flowers thereof, one lily. The lily is the Most High's favorite. And of all the depths of the sea, has filled thee one river. I believe that's the river Jordan. And of all builded cities, thou hast hallowed Zion, Israel, unto thyself. And of all the fowls that are created, that's the, the birds, has named thee one, the dove. The dove is the most high's favorite bird. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one, the sheep. Of all the cattle, the most high has a favorite cattle, it's the sheep. And among all the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. And unto this people, whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many? And upon the root, of one root, hast thou prepared others? And why hast thou scattered thy only one people? among many so I'm trying not to get off the subject here so we're focusing on the fact of the Most High having favorites and so Esdras which is a wonderful book and this back and forth between the Most High his angel Uriel and Esdras the prophet trying to understand as much as he could 
been granted the favor to ask questions and he certainly did that so we're looking at this during the course of this lesson we're just going to close it off but we see this idea of exclusivity rather than what's been pushed throughout uh, what's called this modern Christianity which is uh, Catholicism which means universal what we understand to be replacement uh, theology so everybody can join in and we focus on love, 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 love. God is love. But when you read the scriptures with understanding, you get a different picture. Time and again, the scriptures speaks to his elect. I have chosen you. You belong to me thou art mine my favorite the rest as we read in the scripture the other nations are like the dust of a bucket the dust of the scales rather and the drop of a bucket and they are viewed as nothing you belong to me and so we've made the point we can close it off there I guess this lesson has been God has favorites Shalom until the next one